So you've applied the um, the plaster with a steel trowel and a hawk, yep. and now you're just giving it one gentle float over. The thing with this comb work is the design has to be done while it's still really wet, so you don't get a chance to hard float it. Normally you'd hard float this What do you mean by hard float? A vigorous circular motion as it's going off to compress the aggregate together. Well, now you don't really have a chance with this because you have to do this design whilst the wall is uh, wet and tacky. If, uh, if it picks up on you, you're in trouble. On a decent sized frontage, you'd have two guys putting the stuff on in front of you. You'd have one ruling up and floating whilst I'd come along and mark out my panels and uh, do the patterning. So you've got a continuous flow because you can't afford to get uh, joints in this kind of work. So how do you cope when you're doing an uneven wall surface of a timber frame building? You have to do the best you can. And you don't really... This is fairly uneven here. Yeah. But, you know, it, 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 it's good enough. So then, always keeping your tools moist, you'd hold a, a spirit level up. It's one of the few times when I'd ever use a spirit level. Mm. Now, if I was working on an old thatch with a soffit come down and dropped, mm. I'd cut myself a gauging stick, maybe six inches, and I'd mark that stick and I'd follow the line. Of oh, the roof, the roof. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't do the panels dead square. Right. As opposed to the house. So, we set the first panel up here for demonstration purposes. Mark it with a spirit level. Now, with the best wheel in the world, you can do this stuff freehand. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I mark out lines, but you will never, ever freehand keep this going square and straight. Okay, horse comb. Dip the horse comb in some water. And when you say a horse comb, that is actually that is used for horse for, for horses. horses. Yeah. Hold the comb at an angle and impress. Now see how that's already starting to dry. Lift it up nicely. Okay. If you put too feeble, if you just imprint it with little dots like this, like sometimes you see, a couple of cuts of lime wash and the design's gone. By far the commonest hard design in Suffolk. Then you return back on yourself. Again, you see how we're raising it? Raise the design out. And when you say common, do you, is this historically going back a long way in time? This particular one does. Yeah. I believe this would go back as far as the Elizabethan period, these chevrons. Mm. But it certainly had a massive revival during the arts and craft period. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of houses in Suffolk with this design on them. Now if you wanted, you could measure that line and put yourself spirit level lines all the way through and keep it dead square and straight. But um, I certainly don't bother with that so much. I never did years ago. And to give that an authentic look. And you would take that through the whole panel if you were doing it? Yes, you would do. You'd take this through the whole panel. But for, uh, and is it actually necessary to have a panel? I mean, could you do it across the whole wall without no, any...? No, you wouldn't get the whole wall done. You'd have to panel it out. Now, what, I'll show you why I'll stop there in a second. We'll... Uh, See how the gear's nice and fat and raising up. So when this has been lime washed, it'll still show relief. That'll still show relief, yes. And what you do then is mark this line down. And you mark this line down. And you take this tool, which is the, the half-rounded fluted tool, and you bring him down on that line.
And the tool is cut at 45 degrees to get your it angle. It is, to get the angle. Right. Yes. So you run him along. And afterwards, you take this out with a uh, with a water brush. Now you're going to have to add a, add a piece of stuff. So on this end here, you just put some on the tool and run it along. And in this area, these tools are called flutes. I don't know what they call them elsewhere in the country, but uh, well, I don't know why they're called flutes, but uh, everyone refers to them as flutes. This one is called Suffolk Rope and the comb is held at an angle, and it's brought nicely round, up, then he finishes. Then he's brought round, up, and he finishes. Brought round, up. <coughs> That's quite stunning, isn't it? Yes, it looks nice when you get large areas. And again, you, you would really want to put lines through with this one because it does have a tendency to open and shut this pattern. And ca how far would you go down on the wall? Would you go all the way down to the bottom before? No, you'd set this up in panels. Right. A, a two metre square panel would be yes. more than big enough. You, right. It'd be drying before you could uh, complete yeah. the pattern on that. 